the afternoon, dogs at night, something like that. But I thought, for that be you, too, I said. I said, I'll never go out anywhere. And it sprang me. He said, Yes, you can, he said. I said, How can I? I said, I, I can't go out and leave the kids. He said, I'll get somebody, he said, to come and look after them, and it was safe. He got a sister lit down the road. And he said, Yeah, I'll come up and look after them. She only had Barry, little boy. And um, I said, all right, then I come out all dressed up, went, went out. And I was red for them, they were all smashed. Then, then I see it, maybe at the farm and pine dark. And that number's up the other end. And now and again, they bring me a drink up. Now, what was the night? That one was no night for me, I said. Of course, I kept drinking all these bleeding drinks, so I had enough. Well, and he was driving, drunk. Um, it was a van. It was, it was me and um, David Spranger in it. And um, coming along the, one of them lanes, you know. I see that puppy too, now that corner, the bleeding pup where we was. And I was pregnant then with Shirley. Pregnant. He disappeared. He left the crash, he disappeared, nobody knew where he was. And it, it was me and Spranger ended up in the hospital. And I must have gone out. And um, but he came home with the hand pack and, and um, my jacket, all blood. Didn't think I had the night to live, I told him that. And I did. Well, I'm going to stay. It wasn't a part of my body that wasn't bruised. And and um and he he, he had to go to the hospital have one stitch put in his head. One stitch. And he made such a fuss about that. And I played in hundreds. <laughs> so that was my night out. Anyway, I got from it. And it was him that died, so I've never loved anyone, no way.